And I think that most of the things on this list are gonna trend towards being hardier. Something that's a little bit more tolerant of neglect, maybe not the perfect water chemistry, maybe not the perfect amount of flow or light, they can handle a broad range of conditions. The first is that they, they basically look like this amazing anemone and getting that anemone-like aesthetic in a stony coral was very desirable for me. The other thing that I always liked was the striations on the flesh of the coral. As far as their hardiness, I'd say it's pretty much middle of the road at this point. There was an issue with Indonesian elegance corals being susceptible to infection. Less of a problem now that there's a, kind of this Indonesian ban at the time of this video. So pretty much any new colony that's coming in from the wild is going to be Australian, which tend to be very hardy. Similar to Duncan's, elegance corals can be fed rather easily. They eat a number of different prepared foods, such as frozen mysis and krill. You can even use LPS pellets. There aren't that many color variations as far as elegances go, but occasionally you do come across a rare color morph. So that kind of has a nice collectible value. In particular, I would say about maybe one in every 10,000 or so will have yellow tips. And I used to have this particular colony, it was gigantic. It's probably easily a foot and a half across. And I kind of still wish I had it, but I was made an impossibly good offer and I had to let it go. I'm always on the lookout for interesting color morphs of this, even though they are very uncommon. Are fairly hardy, but torches tend to be a little bit less hardy than the other two and a little bit more susceptible to pests that you really want to avoid be propagated. I know some people like to say that they can cut scolies, but in practice, you cut a scoly, you get a, a weird shaped one, and that pretty much has eliminated all value from it. And it'll take about a decade for it to turn back into a circle. Even if you're able to cut it, have both pieces survive, you end up with two misshapen pieces. I'm just gonna go ahead and categorize that as not really something you wanna be propagating. But the thing about scolies and acanthophilia is just how hardy they are. Acanthophilia in particular are very tough. They might not be the best choice for budget conscious hobbyists, but if you look at the coral just on its own merits and kind of disassociate yourself from the price of this, they're outstanding choices. And finally, number one. This has been a, my and a Blastimusa wellsy. And in the past, I would always kind of say that the smaller polyp guys are the Merletis, the larger polyp guys are the wellsies. That line is getting a little bit blurred just because you can absolutely find Blastimus or Merletti that are every bit as large polyp-wise as a Welsi. Welsies tend to have a little bit better coloration. Uh, you, you, a lot of the more exotic color variants are gonna be Welsi, but I personally have grown to like Merletti quite a lot more. They are much faster growing, they're a little hardier, and there are more color variants being discovered. We somewhat recently acquired a very nice blue and red variant. We also acquired a really nice red and yellow variant. And I've never seen anything like that before in about 20 something years. Okay guys, that does it for my top five favorite LPS corals. If I'm saying it right, it's probably Minnesota style. <laughs> Stretch my O's. We understand. Uh, yeah. So, but that, you know, it's kind of the 